Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here. Uh, so I got a package and you guys already know what it is because the title. So why don't I just go ahead and open this up and then we'll go ahead and uh, talk about it. So let's see here. That looks like a weak point in the... Yeah. All right, there we go. Inside, what we have is a Nintendo 64 DD, and it's got two games with it. It has um, Polygon Studio, uh, which I'll talk about in a bit, and the F-Zero X expansion. Now, of course, this came from Japan. Uh, there it is, yeah, the uh, Nintendo 64 DD. Now, for those who do not know, yeah, this thing looks like it's in pretty good shape. Not bad, not bad at all. Take a quick look at it right there. It's the bottom, well, the top of it, bottom, I guess, whatever. It becomes part of the bottom. There's the front, of course. Um, the Nintendo 64 DD. So what is it? It is actually an expansion for the Nintendo 64. Think of it like the Sega CD or the 32X for the Genesis. Uh, this was only released in Japan. It never saw the light of day outside of it. Um, this is kind of an interesting add-on, uh, I think, because uh, <laughs> this is a theory, but uh, they announced this in, like, the summer of 1995, and it wasn't released until December of 1999, and it really didn't see much press. It just kind of quietly came out in Japan. Um, what they were saying at the time was that uh, Nintendo had made a huge mistake by using cartridges for the Nintendo 64 because of how limited they were as far as uh, technical possibilities, whereas the PlayStation and the Saturn didn't suffer from that problem. Um, their only real advantage, of course, the only real advantage for the N64 was load times were pretty much non-existent because it was a cartridge. Uh, so because they were starting to lose a lot of developers uh, and a lot of customer interest, at least at the time, in 1995, um, they basically released the possible, they basically told everybody, we're making this thing, this add-on will come out, and it will be able to have more power, and it'll be able to have more space and more memory, and it'll be cheaper to produce games, etc., etc. Basically kind of to settle everybody. At least that's my theory on what happened. Because, of course, they didn't release it until four years later, and it barely came out at all. Um, a lot of people just attribute it to being like a big disaster that they just they just couldn't release it. They just kept screwing up and it never came out. Again, my theory is that they just said it to try and calm a storm. I, I think they never really had much intention of ever releasing it. Um, but because they promised, at least in Japan, to release it, they did eventually do that. Um, now, obviously, I haven't used it yet uh, because I just opened it. Um, so I hope it works because I haven't tested it. <clears throat> Uh, I know for a fact that it does, in fact, this is an American N64, I'm an American, um, I know that it works with an American N64, uh, so that's good, you actually don't need a Japanese N64. So the way it works is you just take this, there's a panel on the bottom of the N64, you just take that off, and then you just connect it like that, and uh, that's it. There's places down here where you can, you can screw it in and tighten it together if you want, if you intend to keep it together as one unit, I will not be doing that. Um, now, luckily, Nintendo was actually, they did something very smart with the N64 that's unfortunately Sega never really thought of doing. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have always wondered, like, why the hell the power, uh, uh, the PSU on the back of the N64 was so damn big. Um, and why, you know, it was just a very weird and strange design. And you may notice there's six pinholes back there. I don't know how well it's going to come up, but there's six pinholes for the power. As it turns out, the N64 only uses two of them. So of course you wonder what are the other six four or the other four for what do they do? What's their purpose? Uh, they fuel the DD60 or the N64 DD. You actually don't need an additional power supply for this thing, which is really nice. You just plug in the same thing and boom, you're good to go. And of course that works with uh, Japanese um, voltage and uh, American. Uh, if you're in PAL regions, I think you're going to need to import a either an American or a Japanese console. Sorry about that, that sucks, but that's how it is. Um, but yeah, the uh, so let's see here. I have a couple of games. Uh, what I have here is, this is Polygon Studio. Now, the N64 DD only had, I think, nine games. And nothing nothing too spectacular, unfortunately. Four of them are like, like Mario Paint type of games. 
Um, I, I, like, obviously I haven't played it yet, but uh, I believe this is just kind of like a, it almost feels like a tech demo type of game. You just kind of model things. You know, and then this one is actually one of the more popular releases. Uh, I'm really, really happy this came with it. Um, this is F0X, the expansion kit. Now, F0X, I'm sure a lot of you guys know F0 and F0X for the Nintendo 64, or at least the series, uh, futuristic racing series. Uh, there's an N64 game of just F0. Now, this is the only one that took advantage of one of the 64DD's abilities, which was to modify pre-existing N64 games, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, what it allows you to do is you have new cars, you have new music, you have new maps. Uh, think of it like DLC on crack, you know, I mean, like, it, you know, you bought all this thing, and this was all the DLC ever, and it modifies the pre-existing game, kind of like Sonic and Knuckles cartridge, you know. Um, However, this thing also had the ability to let you uh, create your own cars and create your own levels. And from what I've read, uh, they basically just gave you the developer's tool that they were using to make the damn game and they just put it in here so you could just do whatever you want with it. Now, unfortunately, it uh, does not work with, or at least I'm told anyway, it does not work with the American version of F-Zero X. So you need the Japanese version. I didn't own that, so fortunately I went out and uh, bought that. Haven't opened it yet. So let's open that up. Mini, mini second unboxing, yay! Put that open, and here we go. <clears throat> F-Zero X, the Japanese version for the Nintendo 64. Now, uh, I do not own a Japanese Nintendo 64, and the only thing that would be stopping me from using this on an American N64 is the tabs on the back are different than they are on an American N64. Uh, it will not fit. It's prevented because of the plastic in there. So there's two ways around this. I can either cut out the plastic tab or I can take the lid off and just stick it in directly. Uh, either one would work. I think I'm just gonna take the lid off because I, the plastic tabs on the N64 are much harder to cut than they are on like say the Super Nintendo. Uh, but yeah, so those two together are supposed to be like the best game on the N64 DD. Um, there's a few other games. There's a golf game, which is exceedingly rare. Uh, there's more of these Mario Paint type of games. There's one, uh, there's Talent Studio, Paint Studio, Polygon Studio, and something else. I, I don't really, uh, Communication Kit, I think, but I, I don't know what they all do. Um, there's Doshin the Giant, uh, which I picked up for the GameCube recently. Uh, that's a pretty cool game. Um, yeah, it's basically like a God Simulator game. He plays this big yellow guy named Doshin, and you have to help villagers and stuff. It's, it's pretty neat. It was one of the most, it was probably the most original title on the console. Uh, and then it got a sequel on the console that is an extremely rare title. Uh, and to make matters worse, it requires that you've already beaten the first one and is hardcore Japanese. At least that's what I've read. Uh, so I doubt I'll ever get my hands on that. Um, I would like to get all the N64 DD games, but I can't see that happening, particularly because the Golf one and Doshin the Giant 2 are extremely rare. Um, but, you know, I'll work on it and see what I can track down. Uh, now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to wonder what I paid for this. Uh, DD 64, N64 DDs by themselves used to sell for around $500. Um, the games are also rather expensive. Uh, I've, see, I've seen a few copies of F-Zero up on eBay for like $150. Um, the Mario ones usually are about 50. Um, I'm still trying to track down some of the other games and hopefully get them at a decent rate. I did not pay anywhere near that much. In fact, uh, N64 DDs have gone up. Uh, in fact, I've, I've been looking on that. I've seen a few for like 1200. I'm like, wow, $1,200. Uh, I'm not sure I should tell you. I paid, all I'll say is I paid significantly less than either of those numbers. Uh, it was a pretty damn good deal, considering what came with it. Uh, so, I'm happy about that. Uh, as long as it works, obviously I haven't tested that out. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that, that's kind of it, I think. I don't know what else I can really tell you. Oh, you know what? I'll show you what the cartridges, cartridges looked like. Um, what they, they weren't cartridges, they were actually, uh, like floppy disks, sort of. See? Take a look. There's the back. Um, and then they would go in, just like that. There you go. And uh, I press eject, and they fly right out. Uh, there you go. Uh, now, as I recall, the N64, like a standard cartridge, can hold like 8 megabytes of memory on average. I think it, at the most, I think is Resident Evil 
holds like 120, Resident Evil 2, I think holds 128 megabytes or something ridiculous like that, but that's really expensive to put that many chips into a cartridge. I mean, it was just hard to mass produce. So the idea was that these floppy disks are much, much cheaper to make. They don't require much of anything and they'll hold more memory. I believe this is going to sound you know, trivial now, but I believe they hold 64 megabytes, which is obviously just much better than the 8 megabyte limitation that most N64 games have. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the potential was there. This could have been a really neat add-on uh, had it had more time, or had it, had they actually pushed for it. Uh, again, my theory is that they just didn't release it because they were mostly just trying to convince people that the N64 wasn't out of date, and the, but you just got this thing and it'd be awesome. Who knows? Maybe they decided uh, in the wake of the 32X that it was a bad idea. They might have been right. Historically, add-ons never tend to work out. So really, all this thing is now is just a really neat collector's item. Uh, it did have online capabilities, uh, the service called RandNet. Uh, I believe it would come with, like, if you purchased it, it would come with a mouse, and it came with this cartridge that was essentially a modem, and you'd connect to the internet, and you'd read their, net, like, their special newsletter, and you could play certain games online with people. It's pretty neat, conceptually, but again, just not practical, you know, didn't end up working out. So, that's kind of it. That's the N64DD in a nutshell. Uh, I guess what I'll do now is I will hook it up and I will just, maybe I'll show you guys some real quick footage of it in action and turning on. I'm just curious to see like what it looks like when it boots up and stuff, assuming it works. I really hope it does, cross my fingers. Okay, I've got the console all set up now and uh, I've got a game here. Now, if I were doing a full-on review of games, I promise you guys I would capture footage, but since that's not what we're doing, I'm just kind of showing it to you. Uh, so these are the cases. They're actually pretty neat cases. Um, they just open up like this, and inside you have your manual, and then you have the, uh, I guess we'll call it a floppy disk, I'm not really sure exactly what it would be called, just a 64DD title. Um, but it, yeah, it goes in like this, and of course you can just eject it by doing that. Uh, now we turn it on, obviously with no cartridge in it, because if it has a cartridge in it, it will go to that first. So we turn that on, and then this will start to light up. Yeah, give it a second there. Yeah. So uh, that's just the basic intro. Yeah, all right. All right, enough of that. So you guys get it. Um, that's uh, Polygon Studio for, obviously, the N64DD. Uh, I'll give you a quick look at uh, F-Zero. Uh, but I will have to, of course, like I said before, take apart the top of the N64 in order to do that. Okay, so I've got the N64 set up. As you can see, it looks ridiculous, but this is the way it will work. This is also, of course, a tip. If you ever want to get an import Japanese game and you don't feel like cutting the tabs on your N64, this is a very ghetto solution to it. Um, now, of course, this is the F-Zero expansion, as discussed before. Uh, I'm just going to show you quickly what happens if you put it in without the game attached. Uh, the, the actual cartridge, I mean. Pop that in, and turn it on. See that cool little boot up for the DD64? And basically, I'm sure that says something like, hey, dumbass, you need the cartridge. Um, probably a little bit nicer than I said it, but yeah. So we're going to go ahead and give it that cartridge. Pop it right on there. And then, turn it on. And boot it up. 64 DD. And yeah, so you can see DD loading. And uh, yeah, it's got, see there, it says N64 DD. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like without the uh, DD game install or attached. Just turn it on with just the cartridge. And you'll notice the intro is, of course, different. It didn't say DD, and it doesn't say it there now. So I'll turn it back off and put this back in. Sorry, <laughs> just want to show you guys the difference. 64 DD, DD loading. Now that's pretty neat. I mean, this this just shows you guys like the potential was really there. You know, they could have done something really cool with this. Now, I obviously I have not played with this at all, but uh, you know, here are your extra options. I'm assuming course edit. Um, yeah, you know, like it's it's really too bad that this thing didn't get a more popular release. It could have been really neat, but uh, at least it is out there, and we can kind of get a glimpse at you know what the N64 might have been. 
uh, with something like this. I mean, there were a lot of games planned for this thing, supposedly. Um, I remember reading on point that uh, Ocarina of Time was actually going to be for this thing, and it would have been a much bigger and, you know, more, I guess, theoretically a more adventurous and crazier game. I mean, who really knows? Uh, we never really will know, unfortunately. But uh, this, like I said, this gives you an idea of what it might have been like. Um, I am going to work on trying to get more of the uh, DD64 games, uh, but, um, you know, there just aren't that many of them. And, yeah, like, you know, it's really, now, it's nothing more than a collector's piece, but it's a really cool one if you are a video game fan in general. See you guys later.